Hello and welcome at last to a very special How I Paint Things. Now the Sisters of Battle are awesome and we finally have some new miniatures for them. It's been a great many years and I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Uh, now that the miniatures are actually out, what a big difference they are over those old metals. They're dynamic, there's a ton of detail on them, they're just an absolute treat to paint. So I've gone ahead, I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different. Now if you were going to be painting, say, the Order of the Argent Shroud, uh, this colour scheme will work very well for what you've got to do there. All you need to do will be to flip a, color, a couple of the colours. Now I was looking for something a little different to do, because me being me, you know, I like mixing stuff up. So looking in the codex, there is an example, there's a picture in there of Sisters of the Order of Our Martyred Lady fighting alongside Iron Hands. Now, ordinarily, followers of the Omnissiah and the Sisters of Battle are shown to be at complete odds with one another. So I thought this was kind of interesting, and I figured, well, what if there was actually an entire order which sort of cleaved to the idea that the Omnissiah was a reflection, you know, he was an aspect of the God Emperor. You know, imagine you're a Sister of Battle, and everywhere you look that you can see the machine spirit in things, what you see instead is the divine will of the Emperor making that thing work for you. The Imperium would be a miracle on the whole. So I thought, you know what, let's go with it. So I decided I would call these guys, these are the Order of Our Martian Father, which I reckon sounds kind of rad. <laughs> and uh, what I wanted to do was actually take the look of the Skatari and translate it directly onto the Sisters of Battle. And I think ultimately it came out pretty well. There are one or two changes in colour that I had to do to make it work on the sisters. They don't have as much leather, for example. But the end result, I think, will work quite well. So there are a few more paints than usual in this guide. Um, I thought about doing a real sort of simple one, but honestly, I've wanted to do these guys for a while. So there is a bit more in the way of paints and, and suggested tools and the like. So just bear that in mind. You could cut a few corners, and I do also give you a few suggestions on different colors you can use along the way. So without any further mucking around, let's get into it. Now to begin with, I've primed this miniature with a spray of Army Painters plate mail. As you can see, it's quite bright, very nice silver. What we do need to do though, is go over it with another silver. Uh, you could use plate mail from Army Painter, but I'm gonna use Iron Hand Steel for this. You might wonder, well, if it's silver already, why do I want to paint it again? And the short answer is because if I make a mistake with either my priming, or later on, if I were to go ahead and, you know, get a, get a little bit of robe color or something on her armor, I need to be able to color match it accurately. So what I'm doing here is kind of future-proofing myself if I make any mistakes. It also allows you, if you have missed any areas with your primer, just to get in there and make sure that everything is a nice solid coat. Don't worry too much about areas of skin and robes and what have you. You're really just concentrating on the armor. Simple as that. Now part of the reason we're not going to do anything else with her armor straight away is that things are about to get a little messy. I've got some Rakarth flesh and I'm going to paint the inside of her cape. So you see here, hmm, how to get to this. You'll need to be a little bit creative with how you move your model around. So it's a little difficult to sort of show on camera here. But you can generally reach most of the areas that the eye will see with a brush. If you can't, don't worry too much. Now, of course, you could assemble your sister in parts. You know, go ahead and uh, do her in sub-assembly so that you can reach these areas much more easily. But honestly, we're looking at ways to get models on the table. You know, we're not too worried about winning golden demons. So this is pretty quick, but it does require a little bit of clever finagling. But whatever the case, just get some Rakarth flesh on here. This is going to be the base coat to the inside of our cape or robes, whatever you want to call them. Now, obviously, this will be a little more difficult on some areas than others, but I've done a pretty good job of that, I think. I've gotten to pretty much everywhere that you can see, and I think I only splattered the back of her heel there. Now, what I've also done at the same time is just to give her a quick coat of Rakarth flesh over her face, 
It's not going to be the color that it is, but it's going to give us a pretty good base coat for what we apply later. Now we've got some of Fist on Red, a little bit of water in there just to make it flow smoothly off my brush, and luckily this part is a whole lot easier. All you need to do, go along and cover over all the outside of the robes in the color of your choice, in this case, red. Now ironically, when I turned around and said that was going to be the easier part, I actually made more splashes of red than I did with the uh, Rackar Flesh to begin with. Not a big problem. But what I do want to say very quickly is that we're going to leave the cleanup stage for the armor until very near the end of what we're doing. Now what I've got is Seraphim Sepia, and I've got my big old shade brush here. I'm going to go over all of these robes. So like I mentioned, things are probably going to get messy. Uh, there we go, that'll do. And just take your time. I'm going to give these not too generous a coat. You just want to get some shading on there. So going around the whole model with Seraphim Sepia on all of the robes, nice and quick. Now after about 20 minutes to dry, we've got that nice change in color. We've got a little bit of shading in the red, and it hasn't changed the color of that over much. So what we're going to do later is a little bit more to brighten up some of the high points. What we're going to finish off first, though, is a few more base coats. Now for this, I've got this is Vallejo's Leather Brown. I'm using this because I like this. This is a slightly more chocolatey sort of color. You could go to something like uh, Dryad Bark if you wanted. But I'm going to paint in, funnily enough, all of the leather details with this. So her gloves, uh, this corset thingy she's got going on. I might need a little less water in the paint, actually. <laughs> uh, so painting these in. And you'll see when we get around to the other side, like the corset goes all the way around and wraps around her back. And you'll see a join just up under the power plant. So this is going to get a little messy on this thing. You'll see I don't really mind too much if I am going to get that brown. I'm just making sure that I am going to get the back of that gear as well. So, filling in all those leather details. Oh no! I just realized I've assembled it without a bolt pistol. Oh well. <laughs> uh, all of those leather details, let's get that done now. And with the brown applied, we're starting to see some of that Skitari look come in. What I've got now, this is another Vallejo color. This is black gray. And again, if you wanted to stick to Citadel, you could use, uh, this is very similar to Corvus Black. What I'm going to do is just fill in some of the armored joints. So if you've got any of these exposed, you can fill them in with a little bit of black here. And let's do these pipes at the front in that same color. You don't need a huge amount of this. You just want to sort of break up some of the larger silver areas that aren't then going to be gold. Now the wooden effect on these guns wouldn't work very well, I don't think. So instead of copying the Skatari directly, I've got here, this is Iron Warriors. And I'm just going to cover over the bolter casing with that, just to break up some of that silver. And that'll look dead spooky once we get the rest of the details on it. Now while that's drying, we'll go up to her face. I've got some Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're just going to go ahead and cover over all of the skin. And you'll see the coat of... Was it Rekar Flesh we did first? Really going to help with the coverage there. Don't worry too much if you do get it on her hair because we're going to paint that almost last. Now we're going to do just a couple of gold details. And I'd suggest you probably don't want to go crazy with this. I've got my Retributor armor, and I'm hoping you can't hear the neighbors stampeding up and down the, the stairs. <laughs> I'm just going to coat over very quickly. Uh, Retributor Armor is an absolute delight putting on over Silver A. It works so well. Uh, don't forget your bolter casing. has probably got something interesting there that you can pop a little bit of gold on. And I'm, some people like to do the, uh, the cage on the bobbles on the backpack here. On my Ordinary Sisters, I prefer to leave it the same color as the rest of the armor. Uh, if I was painting a Sister Superior, then I would go ahead and do it in gold. But that's up to you. Uh, just a little bit to break up some of the silver and introduce a little bit more warmth to some of these areas. So as much of this as you think is going to look good. Then I've given my Corax White a really good shake, and we're just going to cover over any areas that, funnily enough, you want to be white. 
Now this, as well as with the gold, I think you're better off doing slightly smaller areas, you know, don't go overboard with this. Whatever you like the look of, it's really up to you. You're making it up yourself. So now I've moved on down, I've got a small layer brush here. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of Reichland Flesh Aid straight onto her skin, making sure that it gets into the recesses. And we'll give that a few minutes to dry. Now what I'm going to do while that's drying is go back to my Iron Hand Steel. Ta-da! What I'm going to do is two things. I'm going to cover over all of the areas that I've made a bit of a mistake. So you'll see here there's a bit of shade on her boot. Um, anywhere that I want the, the silver to be you know, painted up correctly, let's say. What I'm going to do then is swap back onto my small layer brush and I'm going to dot in all of these little buttons and things. So <laughs> there's a fair bit of those. Uh, there's not really a trick to it, so I'm not going to do that on camera because that'll be quite fiddly. But when we come back, that's what you're going to see. Oh my goodness, there are a lot of buttons. <laughs> What we're going to do now though, I've got my shades out again. I've got Nuln Oil here. We're going to go over all of the sort of metallic stuff. So the bolter, the armor, and the white areas too. All right, we're going to leave the gold for later, but anything that is basically armor, sort of working armor, let's say. Let's fill that in now and go with a little bit of Nuln Oil. And then after about 20 minutes to dry, oh, doesn't that look better? Now as well, what I've done is I got my small layer brush again and a little bit of Nuln Oil and dot, 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 dot down all of those uh, buttons. It's time consuming, but I think it does add quite a bot, uh, quite a bit rather, quite a bot, goodness. Uh, it's nice. <laughs> I've got here my Agrax Earthshade and we're gonna go over all of the gold and the brown leather details in this. Same procedure again, just being careful when you reach the edges of areas that you have already done the armor for. Now we've got all of those shades on, I think we're really starting to get somewhere. I've also gone ahead and I put a little bit of the Agrax Earth Shade on the dark metal on the bolter, and I think that quite nicely, yeah, I like how that turns out. Looks kind of similar to the uh, box art for the Order of Our Martyred Lady. What I've got now is a little bit of Kislev flesh, and we're going to finish in her face. Now this is going to be a real trick to try and do with the camera in the way. What I'm going to do is paint in most of her skin, and leave a darker color in the recesses. I am probably, yeah, I'm going to do this off camera. <laughs> and then from there, I have added just a little bit of flayed one flesh to highlight the very edges, so along her brow, her bottom lip, her cheekbones, and tip of her nose. Now I've done a few videos on painting faces, so feel free, there's a lot more detail in those ones, guys. I'm just going to do some black and black in her hair. Nothing too complex here. Now we're going to get on with some Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to highlight these robes. So some of the areas where there is a little bit of shading still visible, you want to paint around those, so just the higher areas. As much as possible, keep your brush moving in the same direction. You'll find it is easier to get a nice smooth transition of color if you're doing that. Just take your time once you get closer to where the, uh, what do you call them, the buttons are. As much or as little of this as you like. And when it comes to red, the question of where and how much to highlight really is one of personal preference. I just say, you're going to enjoy practicing it, I think. You will get some very cool results by messing around with how much water you've got in your paint and how much of it you use. What I've got now is Ushapti Bone, and we're going to do the same thing on the beige areas. So, same sort of deal, I want to be able to draw my brush continuously in the same direction. But I'm not going to worry too much about getting all the way under the, uh, <laughs> under the robes for this one. Now what I've got, this is a little Night Quest or Flesh. This is a fairly recent paint, uh, so if you wanted to, you could instead go ahead and get yourself some Gawthor Brown. But I like this a little more as a sort of a careworn leather finish. Um, as an aside, the three dark skin paints, uh, Catachan Flesh, Blood Reaver Flesh, and this one, uh, also, funnily enough, make for some very nice skin tones, so 
good ones to add to your arsenal. Just going to go ahead and add just a little bit of detailing on some of the leather, just to make that pop a bit. Not very much though. Now then I don't want to alarm you, but I've got some white and we're going to highlight the white. <laughs> so let's cruise around and finish off these details, leaving a little bit of that shaded area just underneath. So you get cool three dimensional effect. Now we're starting to get into the home stretch. I'd suggest a little bit of storm vermin fur, and we're just going to do some of the lines in her hair. Uh, you don't have to go crazy with this though. And we'll use just a tiny smidgen of liberator gold, and I will let you guess what we're highlighting with that. Then at last comes the question, do you want to highlight her armor? Now for my rank and file sisters, I ordinarily wouldn't do this, but because I want to sort of demonstrate, what I've got is a little bit of Stormhurst Silver, and we're just going to use the edge of a brush along some of the extreme edges of the miniature. So rather than trying to paint a straight line, we're really sort of cheating it and just brushing along areas that we really want to gleam. Now, if you want to be you know, careful, you can get a little bit closer here and use the tip of your brush just along some areas that you want to pick out. Um, along the back of knee pads, for example, this is a really good idea to brighten these up. But as much or as little of this as you like, just go around now and fix up some of the armor as you like. Now I've splashed just a little bit of Noln Oil into her eye sockets, so I don't have to worry too much about uh, highlighting her eyes. And there we have most of the work done. What I'm going to do now is give her a quick uh, Munitorum Spray Varnish, because I want her to be a little bit more indestructible. From here you could go ahead and do some orange to do extreme highlights on the robes, but again, this is bog standard infantry for the army. I don't want to be spending all that time on all of them. But when we come back, I'm going to show you how I'm actually going to do the bases for this army too. So let's get her varnished. Now after the varnish, you'll see she's got a bit of a satin finish to her, but I quite like that. As well, it also helps some of the highlights and recesses pop a little more, which I really enjoy. It's a very quick step to, to get that extra. But on the base, we're going to start off with some Sterling Battlemire, and I'm going to use a big old spreading doubler for this. And just cover all of this. I think I've got some on her boots. Doesn't matter. We'll just cover all of the base in Sterling Battlemire, then give that about half an hour to dry. Now once that's dry, get yourself a busted old dry brush, and I've got here some riser rust. Now this is going to look absolutely awful going on, but you need to be more generous with it than you would think. You want to cover over most of the brown and just leave a little bit of the, uh, the dirt underneath visible. So careful when you get closer to the robe and such, but keep the faith. Use, <laughs> use a fair bit of this, and you might find you want to go back over it a second time as it's dried, but that's up to you. All I'll say is that you do want to be more generous with it than you would think. And then over the top of that, let's get some Eldar flesh. And again, just using a raggedy old brush. You want to be a little less generous with this. You're really just dry brushing this quite lightly over the top. And this is giving us more of the actual sand and dirt color than just straight orange. You'll see it. I really like how that turns out. It's a good sort of not quite Mars color. Uh, I actually got this out of a white dwarf. This is a really cool uh, basing article that had some alternative suggestions in there. And yeah, I like this rather than that Martian iron crust stuff. Matter of personal taste, of course, but... There we go, there is our dirt. And there we have it. I've added a couple of tufts from the army painter. These are the uh, wasteland tufts. Painted her rim in black, and there she is, ready to hit the table. I'm really pleased with the end result, to be honest. Uh, I think these miniatures are absolutely bonkers. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this re-release, and yeah, the design on these guys has been really super. So very pleased to get this painted at last. So any questions or anything, guys, feel free. 
drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time and you all enjoy the rest of your day.